But the more fun way to test the function, of course, not the only required way, is to use the function in a Big Bang. So in order to use a function in a Big Bang, for example, in order to add points when the mouse is used, we need to write an unmouse handler. Now, the unmouse handler has to have a signature like this. It has to be taking a world as input and a number and a number and a mouse event and return a world. Whenever we give a mouse handler to Big Bang, it has to have this signature or the Big Bang just won't work. We cannot just give add to a couple of points to Big Bang. If we do that, it's not going to have the right signature. So we need to give Big Bang a slightly different function, which we can write using add to a couple of points, but which is not the same as add to a couple of points. Okay, so let's call this function mouse. So we're going to quickly design the function. It's called mouse. And it's going to add a point at the mouse location to the given world. And remember, a world is a couple points. We wrote that earlier in a data definition. So when we write world, we really mean a couple points. Those are, in the context of this project, equivalent. OK. So let's write some example for this function as usual. If the mouse is used where the current world is CP0, but the mouse moves, let's say, to 5100. Remember that mouse event is an enumeration, and one of the possibilities of a mouse event is move. So the mouse is just moving there, 5100. Well, then we should add a point there. So that's CP1. So this is kind of similar to the example we have of add to a couple points, but you can see the signature is different. In add to a couple points, it's taking a point and a couple points. That's what the signature says. In mouse, it's taking four inputs. It's taking a couple points, a number, a number, and a mouse event. So these two functions are not interchangeable, even though they are kind of similar. And that's why we really need to pay attention to the signature every function we write and every function we use. OK, so that's one example. Let's do at least another example. What if we're currently at CP1 and the mouse is clicked at CP1? Well, then we should get CP2. So again, button down is one of those uh, possibilities of mouse event. It means that someone pressed down the mouse button, and that's a good excuse to add a new point to the current world. So those are two examples. Maybe that's enough examples. Let's see. Uh, let's move on to writing the template. You might think that in order to write this function, we need to use the same template for processing a couple of points or a template for processing a mouse event, which is an enumeration template. But actually, here we're not really looking inside the couple of points. We're just passing it to add to a couple of points. So that's designing our mouse function by function composition. Uh, we're also not really caring here about which mouse event it is. We're just ignoring the mouse event, in fact. So we don't actually need to write a very long template. We just need to remind ourselves that we have these things to use. This is good enough for a template for this function because we're just going to use function composition to finish defining it. We don't even need ME because, again, I'm going to ignore the mouse event. And now we just need to figure out how to add a point at x and y to cp. Well, we already have a function for doing that. That's add to a couple of points. So we're just going to use that. Now, whenever we use a function, we have to pay attention to its signature. It needs a point and a couple points in that order. So we better not just give it these three inputs, because that's a wrong number and wrong order of inputs. Instead, we need to give it a point which we can make using make point, followed by a couple of points. OK, so that's now a mouse function. We can test it in two ways. The more fun way is to run the Big Bang. OK, so now I can move the mouse. And look, whenever I move the mouse, it's replacing 
the oldest point by for the mouse. So the older point goes away, and then the mouse uh, location becomes the newest point. And if I move the mouse fast enough again, I get two points that are still moving up. That's one way to test the function. The more reliable way and the way you should always use is to use check expect to test the functions that make up the Big Bang. So we have tests for all three functions. We have tests for draw a couple points. We have tests for move a couple points up. And we have tests for mouse. All 16 tests pass, which gives us far greater confidence that our Big Bang can work. One last thing, it would be nice if we can move the mouse without changing the world. It would be nice if only when a button is pressed down that a world is changed. We could quickly change our mouse function to do that. So let's go through the design recipe and change each step to only change the world if the mouse button down is pressed and not when the mouse is just moved. Let's look at the signature. The signature is still okay, but the purpose is a little different now. It's not just at a point at a mouse location to give a couple of points, always. It's not always, it's if the mouse button is pressed down or when the mouse button is pressed down. Okay, so we have to update the purpose. We also have to update in step three, the examples, because this example is no longer valid. Here the mouse is moving. So we better just change it to CP0. So the same input world is the output world. But if the button is pressed down, then we should still get CP2. The examples no longer say how we get from CP0 to CP1, but that's okay because the mouse function, like all functions we pass the Big Bang, is only concerned with one step at a time. So we've updated the examples. Now we need to think about what template to use. Before I said, we don't care about the couple of points, we're just passing it to add to a couple of points. We don't care about the mouse event, we're not using it at all. But now we are using the mouse event. We should care about the mouse event. We should see if the mouse event is buttoned down or not. In other words, we should actually use the template for processing and enumeration. In a previous lecture, you actually wrote that template. This is a template that you hopefully wrote when we covered enumeration. And this is a good template to use for the mouse function. So I'm going to rename it from process mouse event to just mouse. But when I rename, again, I have to think about all the other inputs, the first three that are along for the ride. So I'm going to add those in. Now we are ready to fill in the template. We're in step five of the design recipe for the new mouse function. Here's the old definition. It's not correct anymore because it doesn't work in the move case, but it does work in the button down case. So I'm going to take it and use it to fill in the button down case. Okay, this line's getting a little bit too long, so I'm going to split it. In all the other cases for all five other mouse events, we actually just want to return the same couple points that we got as the input. So in all five cases, we could fill in CP. CP is an input. Okay, we can run this program again. And again, there are two ways to test a program. The more fun way is to use a big bang. And the more reliable way is to use automated testing. In order to shorten this code, we can take all five cases at the bottom of the count and turn it into a single word else, which covers all remaining cases. And here, that really does help clarify what the function is doing. So let's do that. Whenever we change the program, we should test things again, not just by fooling around with the Big Bang, but also using automated testing. All right, enjoy extending this Big Bang animation to three points.